And this is what you guys need to know for this year. If you want to walk in greater exploits with a greater anointing and more intimacy with God, here's the principle. Mm. You got to starve one and feed the other. Say it with me. Starve Starve one, one, feed feed the the other. other. That means if you want your flesh stronger, feed it. Mm -hmm. If you want your spirit stronger, feed it. So the principle of walking in the spirit is that you are starving your flesh, feeding your spirit. A fast is an amount of time where you're saying, I'm going to discipline my flesh. I'm going to starve my flesh and feed my spirit. And you come out with spiritual strength. You come out with a greater awareness Mm -hmm. of his voice. You come out being able to see what he wants to do. The clarity in your spirit, the distractions are removed. Burdens are destroyed. Mm -hmm. Yokes Yokes are destroyed. Burdens are removed because of that. You have been sowing to your spirit. What's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. Man, we are so pumped to have you back with us. Guess what? This is season number two, everybody, of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha, and we're so honored to have you guys join us. Absolutely. We just want to say thank you to everyone that has followed us for the last year, and then welcome to everyone who's here for the very first time in season two. Listen, we have been traveling. I've been traveling, and I heard so many great testimonies about um, how the podcast is really, and the YouTube channel has been blessed your lives. Yeah. Um, you know what? I have to share a couple of them. Please, okay. Go I'm going to share go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. two of my favorite. Okay. All right, all right. The first one was from a single mom in uh-huh. her early twenties. Uh-huh. Um, she said that she listens to our podcast basically every day before she's going to work. Uh-huh. And um, I was able to pray with her on the moment because she was just saying how she's getting tips for life and uh-huh. how to live a life as a believer. Uh-huh. And there was a lot of condemnation that she had been feeling about being a single mom because she knew that, you know, she wasn't married and whatever guilt and condemnation nation that comes with that. And I was just able to breathe life into her situation. And I am just so happy that people like that can tune in and um, just have grow closer with God. Yeah. But here's here's like my my favorite one, okay? Uh-huh. Um, it was a lady, she's married, and she had been married for, you know, several years, maybe 15 years. And um, she said, Pastor Tab, Pastor Tab, I don't have a lot to say. I just want you to know that we are watching the marriage um, podcast and, or um, what did she say? The marriage podcast. And she said, and I went out and got my massage table <laughs> because she has been listening Come to us on. talk about me doing Ken's nights yeah. and buying a massage table and just giving you a night. She said one night every month, she breaks out her massage table and gives her husband a massage. Come on. Now, in that all of our years us. of ministry, he how many have us. we been doing? How many years have we been doing We've this? We've been in ministry almost 17 years. 17 years. So in all almost. of those years, uh-huh. never has anyone come up to me and said, I bought a massage table. Listen, you go, girl. You go. I know your marriage is <laughs> blessed. <laughs> I don't know why people don't take those cues. I'm I'm so spongy in the spirit. Like if I see somebody who has fruit in their life, if you do it, I'm going to try to go out and reduplicate it. Not that you want to be a carbon copy, but there are principles. I double dog dare you that if you are a wife, go get yourself a massage table and start giving your husband a massage. I'm telling you, your marriage will go from here to here. And really, that's what this is about. Of course, this is a marriage podcast, a relationship podcast, but it's not just that. It's for married people and single people, Mm -hmm. old people, young people, people that are Christians, people that are non-Christians. We want to bring a value to your relationship and to your life. This is what we know, that when you grow, the relationships in your life grow. Yes. And so we pray all the time and we say, God, send people to our podcast, to our show that just needs what we have. They just need Mm -hmm. it. And so we don't believe that you're here by an accident. We pray, God, let people find us somehow, some way. And if this is adding a value to it, please reach out to us, leave a review, make sure that you subscribe right now and let us know. But I'm pumped about today. Come on. This is a new season. It's a new season Mm. (laughs) and it's a new day. I feel like I won't be on tune. So I'm I'm not going to join in with you. I I wasn't feeling it. Whatever with that. Okay. Today's episode is entitled Five Benefits to Fasting and Praying. Yeah. Yes. And you know, sweetheart, it has been our tradition to most years, mm-hmm. uh, probably um, nine out of 10 years, mm-hmm. to start our year with 21 days of prayer and fasting. Mm-hmm. And there is no other subject that I felt like we needed to dive into to mm. start off a new season and a new year, but to jump into 21 days of prayer and yes. fasting. Why, why do you think that is? Why is I this mean, important? I mean, it's so important. I, I think the Bible instructs us to lead a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Yeah. Jesus modeled prayer and fasting. Uh-huh. Um, and so, I mean, and for me, this is like a love language for me. Mm-hmm. Like, 
I am all about prayer and fasting. Okay. I'm I not, love it. I know. Okay. I know. Like, I don't know. I love. I love. I love the benefits of it. But when you ask me to put down food, I know that's There's, just like I'm never looking forward mm-hmm. to that. If I was honest, I'm like, oh, I, I want to give up my chicken for some reason. Mm-hmm. That's just not what I. But the benefits mm-hmm. far outweigh the sacrifice, mm-hmm. and that's why a lot of people don't fast. They don't fully understand the benefits. Mm-hmm. But I understand the benefits. So even though I don't want to do it, I still do it. Yeah. But you. I've noticed you, you, you love, it seems like you love to fast. I do. Yeah. Why I is do. That? <laughs> I think I've tapped into, there's a place that I get in my flesh uh-huh. when I am so far into a fast uh-huh. that it really breaks my flesh. Uh-huh. It kind of breaks my own will or uh-huh. my own selfish desires. Mm-hmm. It feels like, let's say if I do a three day fast about uh, like at the end of the first day, going into the second day, I feel like um, the things that really would get on my nerves the day before, they don't anymore. Mm-hmm. In traffic, you know how I get just a little bit anxious in traffic. in traffic. I ri- I mean, I'm in traffic like, God bless you. Everything's oh, great. So you need to fast it's beca- <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's just this spiritual walk. Yeah. And I love, you know, the Bible says, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. Draw close to me first. Yeah. It's like that game of chess. You move first, then God moves. He's waiting for you to make a move. Yeah. And I think fasting is one of those ways uh-huh. that we can make a step toward God yeah. and he takes a step toward us. Yeah. Let's build a little bit of foundation. So we we are three part makeup, mm-hmm. just like God, God's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're spirit, soul, and body. Mm-hmm. We are a spirit. We have a soul, mind, will, and emotions, and mm-hmm. we live in a body. And so the body part of us is not saved. We'll never be saved. Mm-hmm. So when we get to heaven, we get a glorified body, or we get a new body to you know reign forever in mm-hmm. the New Jerusalem, according to Scripture. But this is what I think we don't realize is that our body is what the Bible calls our carnal nature mm-hmm. or our flesh. And that flesh ain't saved. It, it's lazy. It does not want to pray. Mm. It does not want to turn the other cheek. It does not want to give. Right. It does not want to do spiritual things. So there is a war going on on the inside of every human being. Um, even when you get born again, your spirit is perfect with Jesus and you want to do what's right. But evil is always present. Yes. And that's what the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 7. I want to do what's right, but why do I always still want to do what's wrong? It's because your flesh is stronger than your spirit. Mm. So one of the benefits of, fa- of fasting, and here's the principle, and this is what you guys need to know for this year. If you want to walk in greater exploits with a greater anointing and more intimacy with God, here's the principle. Mm. You got to starve one and feed the other. Say it with me. Starve, starve one. one feed the the other. other. That means you have to, whatever one you want to be stronger. If you want your flesh stronger, feed it. Mm -hmm. If you want your spirit stronger, feed it. And so whatever one you want to be stronger, you got to, you got to feed it and starve the other. So the principle of walking in the spirit is that you are starving your flesh, feeding your spirit. A fast is an amount of time where you're saying, I'm going to discipline my flesh. I'm going to, I'm not going to buffet it. I'm going to buffet it. I'm going to starve my flesh and feed my spirit, and you come out with spiritual strength. You come out with a greater awareness mm-hmm. of his voice. You come out being able to see what he wants to do. The, the clarity in your spirit, the distractions are removed. Burdens are destroyed. Mm-hmm. Yokes, are, yokes are destroyed. Burdens are removed because of that you have been sowing to your spirit. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Yeah. I mean, we fasted throughout the years for different reasons. Sometimes it's just to grow closer to God. Uh Sometimes it's because I'm having a health challenge and I just, I want answers. Uh Um, Sometimes it's because I, you know, I need to, I'm praying for my children and, and um, so I'm just going to fast and pray so that I can Mm -hmm. seek answers, you know? And um, so there's different reasons that you can fast Uh and pray. Uh Um, I don't think it matters the reason, Uh but I think it matters like the results. Um, And, I don't know. It's just. Yeah. I mean, we fasted all kinds of different things. I remember when we first started our first campus in Gainesville, Mm -hmm. every Monday I would fast for about a year and a half to two years Mm -hmm. from when I was called and I knew I was going to Gainesville to where my pastor actually released me. I forgot about that. I fasted every Monday for almost Mm -hmm. two years until we launched that church. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened when we launched the Orlando campus and we moved from Gainesville to Orlando? Mm -hmm. I did it again for about a year. Every Monday I would fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's been certain times, even when you were overcoming cancer, <clears throat> you would actually go into chemotherapy fasted. Mm-hmm. Um, and fasting has spiritual benefits, but mm-hmm. it also has some natural health benefits. Oh, yeah. 
And so we've just seen it be a tool. Mm -hmm. And so for our church, we put it in our waters. So we do a 21 days of prayer and fasting to begin every year. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that's all that we do. And to me, we all should, should just be hearing from the Holy Spirit and fasting. Yes. And so fasting isn't something that we have to do. It's not a commandment like if you don't fast, something is wrong. But if you want to be closer to God, if you want to um, be strong spiritually, fasting and praying, mm -hmm. and I want to say fasting and praying has mm -hmm. huge benefits, meaning that if you just fast, it's nothing but a diet. Yeah. But if you fast and pray, that's when it has the spiritual benefits. That's really important. It's important. I think that's important to know mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people who are dieting, yeah. <laughs> and but we're not praying. Uh -huh. And it, it becomes a fast whenever you pray with it yeah. and whenever you are doing it for, yeah. you know, just um, godly reasons yeah. to draw closer to God yeah. um, and to get God results yeah. in your life. Yeah. And we need a prayer life. <clears throat> we need a prayer life. We do. The things that's been going on, the wars that's been happening. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in an election year now. The division that's in the land. Um, our children are under um, crazy attacks um, from the enemy. Not like that those things haven't been there. We, 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 we don't want to give... Um, what is it? We don't want to give too much notice to the enemy, yes. but we do want to know the schemes of the enemy. We yes. are not ignorant of his devices. And so um, we need prayer like never before. I, I think it's, what is it, Second Chronicles that says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, something like that, Come on. then I will hear from heaven mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I will heal their mm -hmm. land. And we need God to heal our nation. We need God to heal our world. We need God to heal our marriages. Yeah. We need God to heal our hearts. Yeah. And I think that there is something that you get when you invest into prayer that you will never get just from hard work or oh, doing yeah. things in the natural. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, one of the, the most famous fasts I think people know are when Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights mm -hmm. in the wilderness when he was tempted by the devil. Uh -huh. And I feel like, especially for those of us who um, are called into ministry, uh -huh. um, you might not even be five-fold ministry, but, you know, you're if you're a wife, that's a ministry. On, <laughs> if you're somebody. a husband, that's a ministry. Come a dad, on. that's a ministry. And so um, a lot, we've all been called into a level of ministry as we walk with God. But in order for us to believe and see the miracle working power of God in our lives, yeah. we need to fast and pray. Uh -huh. I think Jesus, so he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. After he fasted 40 days and 40 nights and was tempted in the wilderness, then he came out and started to do yeah. miracles, signs, and wonders. Yeah. Not until he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And then overcame temptation. And then overcame then temptation. Out the spirit of power. Luke mm -hmm. chapter 5, probably, mm -hmm. is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. How would you define fasting if you had to define it for someone? Mm -hmm. If I were to define it, I would say it's um, laying down food. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think fasting is a food thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's denying um, yourself mm -hmm. food um, to in, you know, for the purpose of seeking God. OK. Um, and, you know, with prayer. Right. <laughs> Combined what with, about with the, prayer. What about the people who say I fast from social media? Do you think that that's a fast? Um, I think that it, I think that in my opinion, I don't think that's a technical fast. Uh -huh, not I a biblical fast. Not a biblical fast. But it's a good something to do. But it's good, yeah. Mm -hmm. If I am going into a period of 21 days of fat prayer and fasting like mm -hmm. we do at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. um, I am going to lay down social media with that because uh -huh. I know that this is mm -hmm. a time that I need to be focused. Uh -huh. I need to hear from God for my year. Okay. I need to, you know, there's purpose in it. Yeah. So I would I might add that to yeah. it. And like we don't have a problem with saying they're doing a technology fast oh, yeah. or social media fast. Yeah. But a biblical fast re uh, requires some food put down right. and some drink put down. Now, there's different fasting, and we're going to get into it today, mm -hmm. so y'all just stick with us. There is partial fast. There is sun up to sundown fast. There's full fast. There's all kinds of different kinds of fasting. There's mm -hmm. the Daniel fast, and we can, we can kind of chop those up. Um, but to me, when a person says I'm doing a, a, a social media or a TV fast, I think that's a great discipline. Oh, yeah. And we need to do that. Um, but when we're talking about fasting in a biblical context, mm -hmm. we are really talking about putting down some food that you like and some drink that you like. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do a social media along with that, I think those things have benefit just like anything else. Like if you were going to do 21 days of prayer and fasting, mm -hmm. I hope you would put down your cigarettes. 
I hope you would put down maybe the alcohol mm-hmm. for 21 days. Mm-hmm. I hope you would put down pornography for 21 mm-hmm. days. I hope that there would be other things, you know. So if you say, well, I'm doing a cigarette fast. Well, that's really not a fast. You've just chosen not to give your flesh this for 21 days. Absolutely. But I think that when people start putting things down for 21 days, they actually see the power that they have in Jesus. Mm-hmm. For example, the first fast that we had at our church was about 16, 17 years ago, and it was a guy named Neil. And Neil had eaten a bowl of ice cream every night before he goes to mm-hmm. bed. That was just his thing. I'm going to have a bowl of ice cream. So we started 21 days of prayer and fasting, and, and, and as a beginner, his thing was like, I'm going to put down ice cream. Yeah. Okay. Two days go by in the fast, and he find himself eating a bowl of ice cream, and he felt so bad about it. I mean, he just was hit with guilt, <laughs> and you don't have to you don't have to feel guilt and condemnation to get back on the horse. That's but he right. Went, oh man, I messed this up. I ate some ice cream, and I said I wasn't gonna do it. I only went two days, but thankfully he just jumped right back on the uh-huh. horse, and then he ended up finishing the fast, and he didn't mess up again. At the, but 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 Neil was a smoker. And by this time, he's probably 45. He had smoked off and on for the last 30 years of yeah. his life since he was about 15 years old. Mm-hmm. He had smoked cigarettes. And he put down, um, uh, uh, what is it, ice cream, but he smoked cigarettes through the whole fast. Um, a few days after the 21 days of fast was <coughs> open, the Holy Spirit spoke to him. And he said, the same authority that I gave you to put down the ice cream is the same authority that I've given you to put down cigarettes. Wow. And with that revelation, Neil put down cigarettes, and he's been smoke-free now for over 15 or 16 years. It is amazing that God would kind of let you put down chicken, let you put down steak, let you put down macaroni and cheese to teach you that you can put down pornography, you can put down unforgiveness, and you can put down fear. Absolutely. Come on, this is the beginning of the year. (laughs) Listen, I remember the first fast I ever did, Uh and I don't know if we've ever discussed this before, but we were going to a church in Arlington, Virginia, right Uh outside of the Pentagon, Uh back in 2000, right before the whole Pentagon um, terrorist bombing and all of that stuff. Um, Mm 9-11. We were going to a church right in that area, and they had a fast. Mm -hmm. And I was just, I was trying so hard. At this time, I had been depressed for like 10 years. I was trying so hard um, to overcome. Well, I was so excited about this fast. I remember I started the fast and I didn't know a lot about it. I almost, I think I started like a week early Mm -hmm. and I had been fasting for a whole week before and I got to church and realized I was the only one fasting. So then I did it for another week and um, it was such a big deal to me, (laughs) but I felt like a little bad because I got it wrong and didn't really know what I was doing. From that fast Mm -hmm. and going to a church, we ended up leaving that church because we found another church. But I tried to get involved in the church, and God bless the church. I think if they knew better, they would do better. I couldn't get involved. It was really hard with what was going on in that church or whatever. But that after that fast, we got invited to go to another church, Mm -hmm. which became our church home Mm -hmm. for seven years, Mm -hmm. which is the church where I was healed from depression. Mm -hmm. We got filled with the Holy Ghost, where our marriage became better. God Mm -hmm. blessed our... I mean, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that that was the fruit of me just fasting and being innocent before God. I was so clumsy with it. Uh I didn't know what I was doing. Uh (laughs) I'd made a mistake. I remember I went to work and I just started eating lunch like regular. And I was like, oh my God. I'm supposed to be fasting. So I had like one bite yeah. and then I threw the rest away <laughs> because I forgot I was fasting. Yeah. But those things are normal. Yeah. I think whenever you start anything new, give yourself tons of grace. Give yourself tons of space to be able to say, oh, that wasn't wrong. Let me do it right. Come on. You know? But um, and so for those of you all who are watching this and maybe you've never fasted before, we just encourage you. Maybe now's a good time mm-hmm. to give it a try to jump in with us. I've got a few scriptures here. I'm gonna read them. Tell me what you get out mm-hmm. of them. Psalms 35 and 13. It says, "But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. Mm-hmm. I humbled myself with fasting, and my prayer would return to my own heart." Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts about Psalms 35? Anything stick out? I humbled myself mm-hmm. with fasting. Mm-hmm. Um, I think humbling is a way of, yeah. I mean, fasting is a way of humbling yourself. It is. Um, and then I, I love the, that my prayer would return to my own heart, uh-huh. meaning that 
my prayers would be answered. Uh-huh. Like what I pray out to God, uh-huh. it's coming back to me. Yeah, I love it. Um, but manifested. So very powerful. Yeah, to me, the humility part is real big for right mm-hmm. now. I want to start a humility movement because I see pride on the rise. Mm-hmm. People have so much pride. They have pride in their degree, pride in where they live, pride in their ethnicity, pride in their sexuality. And pride, if it's ungodly pride, can bring mm-hmm. you low. It's yeah. what got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. And so I think we need a humble movement. Humbleness is just the low state of mind. And it's really a decision where you give God all the glory. Mm-hmm. It's not saying that you won't be successful. It's not saying that you won't be an influencer. It's not saying that you don't have don't have swag. What it's saying is that um, I could do nothing without Christ Jesus, mm-hmm. but I can do all things through him. Mm-hmm. And so fasting is a form. People don't fast because they feel like I don't need it. I got this. And when you humble yourself and you say, I don't got this, God, I'm going to seek your face. Yes. I think there's something powerful about it. You know, Matthew 17, I'll read this one. Tell me what you get out of this. It says, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic. And he suffers severely, and he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't cure him. Then Jesus said to him, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. And Jesus, he rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. And then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why couldn't we cast it out? Mm. Man, I love this. I'm just thinking about it. Jesus said to him, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. And then verse 21, which is not in every manuscript, Mm -hmm. but I need to explain it because this is where a lot of people get hung at. It says, however, this kind does not go out except prayer and fasting. Mm. What sticks out to you from Mm. Matthew 17? Um, (laughs) I love it so much about it. Mm -hmm. But what sticks out to me right now is the connection between Mm -hmm. they couldn't cast out the demon. Uh He said, because of your unbelief. And then he says, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. Okay, talk to me. Is it, is it because we can assume like, okay, uh-huh. well, this demon only comes out by prayer and fasting. Uh-huh. But could we also assume that he was talking about their unbelief, uh-huh. which only comes out? by prayer and fasting. Okay, talk to me some more. And so I like that <laughs> as a, you know, as a uh-huh. minister, as a, a, a person of God, right, uh-huh. um, who has cast out demons. Yeah. I know that for me, I'm not trying to go out and cast out devils uh-huh. without prayer and fasting, uh-huh. <laughs> without, you know, a lifestyle, without, you know, the name and power of Jesus at first. But I don't know. It just, it's just, it's a reason why I practice prayer and fasting as a lifestyle. Uh-huh. But I think that, Prayer and fasting, I can equate that with power, mm-hmm. power over the enemy, I can power it. over anything yeah. that's in your life, yeah. any obstacle, power. I think some people take verse 21 and they get it wrong mm-hmm. and they feel like, well, if a demon didn't come out, I need to go fast and pray more as if our fasting and praying is going to move God. Right. But our fasting, our fasting does yes, not sir. move God. It actually moves us. Yes, Let me sir. say it again. Our fasting doesn't move God. It actually moves mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. And so what fasting does, it actually makes you more spiritual sensitive so that you can believe the authority that he's actually giving you. Mm-hmm. It's not like you have to fast to cast out a devil. Yeah. That would mean every devil that show up. OK, I can't pass that out right now. I got to go fast. I'm not fasting right now. That, right. that is not what it's right. saying. What it's saying is that um, when you fast. You are going to move your spirit towards God. You are going to build up your belief in God. You're going to build up your faith Mm -hmm. in God. Mm -hmm. And you're going to walk in an authority to whenever a demon shows up, you're going to be in the position to deal with that demon because of the lifestyle that you've been living. That's so good. And I believe that was the main point of Matthew chapter 17. But we can go on and on about Mm -hmm. that. I'm sure people got all kinds of, you know, uh, revelation of Matthew 17. But I'll give you one more. When it comes to fasting, this is actually my favorite. It's Isaiah 58. And here's some promises in this thing. It says, is not this the fast that I've chosen? And I believe that God does choose a fast for us, you know, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo Mm -hmm. the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, Mm -hmm. and that you break Every yoke, not some yokes, but every yoke. Is is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring your house, the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Mm. Then your light shall spring forth like the morning 
and your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. Mm. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard and you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he'll say, here I am. That to me is a promise from God of what we should expect when fasting. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. What jumps out to you about Isaiah? Ah, uh, all of it. That is like my love language. Like, thank you, Jesus. All of it. That your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedy, speedily. Like everything. Your righteousness. The glory of the okay, Lord. Just break it down. All of that. One, okay. You know, so excited. let's just do this. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Which one sticks out to you? I want to talk about your healing shall spring forth. Come on, talk about that one. Okay, so there was a time years ago um, after, I think in between our first and second child, uh -huh. um, and um, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia uh -huh. in lupus. Uh -huh. I was having a lot of joint pain, stiffness. I was just like, it was hurt to walk. I couldn't even open up a bottle of water yeah. and I was having trouble breathing. It was really bad. Mm -hmm. So I came, I was at the doctor. She said, okay, you have lupus. Um, I'm going to diagnose you right now with fibromyalgia. I'm not going to write lup lupus down on your, for insurance reasons mm -hmm. yet. Um, but I need you to take this blood test and come back. And next week I'll, you know, give you all the information. It was actually a 10 day process. I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, I was just like, oh my gosh. I remember I cried. I was upset, all of this stuff. But I came home and I said, well, you know what? I'm not going to receive this. Mm -hmm. I don't receive this. I am going to pray. Because sometimes you got to send doctor's reports back to hell. Where exactly. They and it's not that there's a problem with the doctors. We have a wonderful doctors and we need doctors. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about the doctor's report. Exactly. That, that contradicts the report of the Lord. Um, I'm going to Oh, uh, I'm going to do everything I can do in the natural. I'm going to listen to doctors. I'm going to take medicine if I need to. But at the same time, I'm going to stand flat footed on the word of God. And I'm going to believe God for, for what he's promised me. And healing is a promise from God for us. Sorry, go ahead. Absolutely. Uh -huh. I mean, so yeah, that's where I was. I was like, okay, I don't accept this. Uh -huh. I don't want this. I don't agree with this. Right. So I'm going to fast and pray. I went to the, before I came home from the doctor, I had to stop or they took blood tests. Mm -hmm. They took blood work from me. And I left the office. I I came home, I fasted and prayed for 10 days. Now we had a little girl. It was really hard for me. Um, a couple of those days I didn't get out of the bed mm -hmm. um, because it was so painful. I was having trouble breathing until the night before mm -hmm. I woke up in the middle of the night gasping for breath because I've just, it was just hard to breathe. I remember like it was yesterday. Um, and so that morning, but I decided that morning that I was going to wake up and I was going to get dressed. I was going to do my hair and makeup mm -hmm. and I was going to go to this doctor's office Bye. because Bye. By faith, like uh -huh. I was just going to act like I was healed. Uh -huh. I didn't know what else to do. Come like on. that's what I was going to do. And so I was sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I felt bad in my body until I got to the doctor's office. And I didn't notice, but I was just feeling fine. Like everything was okay as the doctor came in because I was like a little nervous and uh -huh. everything. And um, the doctor came in and she was looking at my blood work and she left mm -hmm. the room. She said, okay, hold on. She left the room and the door was cracked. And I heard her outside talking to a couple of other people flipping through my chart saying, oh, well, but how could this be? And they were having these medical um, conversations. She came back in the office and she was like, I am so sorry. She was apologizing to me. She was like, I'm so sorry. I, I told you you had fibromyalgia. I died. You know, I told you had lupus and I, I was saying all of these. I'm so sorry, but your blood work, everything's fine. Yeah. You know, it's, it's okay. So anyway, when the, the, <laughs> Because she took further blood work. I had blood work done previously. Uh -huh. Ten days later, uh -huh. no lupus, uh -huh. no fibromyalgia. Everything was good. I went back home healed. Uh -huh. That was the power of fasting and praying. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was a difference that turnaround. So I would say in that moment, the scripture came to pass. Uh -huh. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Slow down for a minute. I, I, I just, I, there's a lot to that story. So when you did 10 days, okay, so you was couldn't even open a bottle of water. You was waking up gasping for breath. I think uh -huh. there's somebody who's been dealing with the same thing. Okay. They, they're dealing with these things, okay? You fasted and you prayed, mm. and then you went back to the doctor. 
what kind of fast was it? Was it a full fast that you did? Mm -hmm. I did. Oh, I don't remember what the fast was for 10 days. I know I didn't. I know it wasn't just a water fast. Uh It was probably just fruits and vegetables um, and water. I just wanted something like that. Mm -hmm. I know that I ate food. When you came back from the doctor after you got a clean report, Mm -hmm. was it completely clean? Like, did you I mean, did you have those ailments anymore? No, it was. So the ailments completely went away. Yeah, it was completely gone. So you went from, you couldn't open a bottle of water Mm -hmm. to everything being back to normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to slow that down for a minute because our God is not dead and he's not done. Yep. And I think sometimes we take those things as coincidences. Mm -hmm. But anybody out there who's listening that's had, whether it's cancer, fibromyalgia, lupus, sickle cell, I don't know what it's named, but it still has to bow to the name of Jesus. And I'm not saying that if you fast and pray, you're going to get the exact same results. I'm not saying it's going to take 10 days. And God, what I'm saying is that our God is faithful and his name is Jehovah Rapha. He is the God who heals. And there are secrets in the kingdom. And one of the secrets is in fasting and praying. And the promise is that your health, and this is what you were saying, Mm -hmm. is going to spring forth speedily. Mm -hmm. It's going to, that's a promise, meaning that you can take it to the bank. Like God, you said that when I fast and pray and I seek your face, you would heal my land and that health will spring forth speedily. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I've seen you practice that. And we've had our own battles, you know, with with that and then with other things in our lives. And we fasted and prayed. And, man, that's the power of fasting. Um, anything yeah. else that you wanted to go? I just wanted to slow that down just a tad bit. Anything else that jumped out? Um, no, I would just say it, uh-huh. it talks a lot about um, that your righteousness shall go before you, the glory of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Then you shall call the Lord and he will answer. Yeah. You know, like if, you know, if you need answered prayer, I remember I would pray for people. Um, I remember uh, years ago, our pastor uh, uh-huh. was sick and in the hospital. The moment I heard he was sick, I went into prayer for him. Yeah. Um, there are certain times where just like, you just know, like, this is, this is more than just a prayer. I need to fast and pray because I need answers. Why do you think people don't do it? If it's so powerful, I mean, it's promises attached to it. He's going to loose the bonds of wickedness. Come on, man. He's going to let the oppressed go free. Mm -hmm. We've heard of people getting healed, people getting set free from cigarettes. Mm -hmm. You get closer to God. It would seem like something we would always do, Mm -hmm. but we don't. Yeah. Well, I think it's the same as prayer. You know, people we say you have not because you ask not. Uh Um, And so why don't we pray? Uh, These are spiritual disciplines. Um, And it's just like, why don't we exercise? (laughs) Why don't we drink enough water? Uh, They're disciplines. We know what to do, but we don't do what we know we should do. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Motivation. We have to be motivated. That's crazy. And, you know, love has to be your motivation for this, a, uh-huh. a hunger and a thirst for God. Yeah, I think that some people view fasting as I'm trying to punish myself. Mm-hmm. They almost like, I've seen people over the years, it's almost like they're fasting and they fast all the time. They fall off on this religious they kind of thing. They fall off on thing. this religious angle of like punishment and ashes and sackcloth and hurting yourself. But to me, the foundation of every discipline is love. And it's a love for God, and it's also a love for the temple. Mm -hmm. And your body is a temple of God. And because I love God and I want to seek his face, I love him more than I love my food right now. Mm -hmm. I want to know him better that way. So it's not because I want to hurt myself or punish myself. It's just because I want to live in a way that I can be closer to him as possible. And so if there's a person listening that's never fasted before, what would would be your advice to them? I would say... um, just, just start, you know, you just do it. Yeah. Just give it a try. Just like with, you know, with anything, um, and you know, start small. Well, here's some different fasts that you can do. You can do fruits and vegetables Mm -hmm. only, meaning that you'll take seven days, 14 days, 21 days. You can set the day you like to do. I've seen you like to do three day, all water fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did it one time. It hurt like crazy, (laughs) but it was, it's yeah. not it's not easy, but it's probably uh-huh. one of my my favorite fasts. Favorite my favorite fast. one is yeah. the three day. I've seen people do twenty one days all water, mm-hmm. and if you do that, you need to get um, you know maybe some healthcare professionals. You need to make sure you're still taking your vitamin stuff. You might mm-hmm. add some broth and some different things in there to help you endure for twenty one days. Mm-hmm. Jesus did forty days. We know that the body is capable to do that, but you want to be very wise. For me, I wouldn't bite off too much too fast. Mm-hmm. You have to discipline your flesh. So maybe if you've never done it before, maybe you should say, "I'm going to start with seven days," or "I'm going to start with fourteen days." If you're part of our 
our church mm-hmm. or want to follow us, you can start with 21 days yeah. and maybe just change it every week. So the first week maybe is fruits and vegetables. The second week, fruits and vegetables, maybe add chicken. The third week, fruits and vegetables, maybe add mm-hmm. fish. You so that, that means, way. let's talk about what it, what you don't eat. You don't eat dessert. You don't eat snacks in between. Yeah. You don't eat, you know, I mean, you could do what you want, but I'm just saying. Yeah, we're just trying to give you some things that you can do. Now, right. you got to be led of God. S- some people have to well, eat five little, you know, a snack in between, yeah. but that means you're not eating candy bars or, you mm. know, maybe carbs and bread and I mean, pasta. For me, normally when I do a 21 day fast, I normally cut out TV, mm-hmm. social media, um, everything but water mm-hmm. or, or hot tea. Mm-hmm. Cause sometimes your body temperature get crazy and I, I need some hot tea, mm-hmm. um, with no sugar, you know? Mm-hmm. And so there are certain things like that, like junk food snacks, those mm-hmm. always go no matter what I do. Yeah. And so sometimes I'll do one week fruits, vegetables. Um, sometimes I'll do, you can do like a six to six, a six, you fast from 6 AM to 6 PM. OK, yep. you can do a sun up to sundown. And many times when you read the Bible and they fasted in the Jewish culture, it was a sun up to sundown mm-hmm. fast. Um, you can do a Daniel fast, which Daniel fasted for 21 days. And he took basically things that was pleasant to the taste. Mm-hmm. And so with the Daniel fast, like honey, and, uh-huh, you yeah. know, breads, yeah. and maybe cheese, yeah. uh, the, you're, the you're condiments re- that make stuff so tasty. Yeah, you're removing all of that. And you basically have a very bland diet for mm-hmm. 21 days. Um, I think you can do a fast where you just skip one meal. So if you don't want to do six to six, you could just say, I'm going to fast breakfast. But if you're that kind of person that always misses breakfast anyway, I think a fast should be challenging for you, Mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be to hurt you. Yes. You know, to where. Um, and then, of course, you know, water only. I think, you know, and what I've seen really when we do this is people Mm -hmm. lose tons of weight. They strongholds are broken. Curses mm. are broken. It's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It's it's really good, though. And so here are five benefits of fasting and praying. Mm-hmm. Are you are you ready? Ready. Number one, it helps put our flesh in check. Mm-hmm. OK. Want to talk about that one at all? Um, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, whenever mm-hmm. I fast, one of the greatest things I have is sort of a I don't know how to put words to it. It's kind of like a peace or like some of that fight because I'm always like my personality. I'm always like on a number 10. Like I'm always like, let's go. I'm Scrappy ready. Doo. Yes. I'm always like let there. Me let me but I find that whenever I fast, uh-huh. it kind of brings me down to an eight a little bit, you know, <laughs> and I'm more calm. All right, all right, I'm more right. ready to respond and not react. Okay. I'm ready to listen and not, you know, have so much to say. So Okay. Yeah. Number two, the second benefit of fasting and prayer is that it's a way to be more spiritually in tune. Mm -hmm. Anything on that one? Um, Yeah, I, you know, I'm not saying I like to use fasting as a tool to Mm -hmm. draw closer to God and to discern. And so typically most Sundays I will fast Mm -hmm. because I'm here all Sunday morning. I'm ministering. I'm praying for people. I'm interceding. Um, and I just, just for me, it's not something that you have to do, Mm -hmm. but I find that I just, I like to minister in a fasted state. Come on. Um, number three, mm -hmm. third benefit of fasting is that it helps us refocus on God. Mm -hmm. And many times we are so distracted by work. The kids are, you know, we feel stressed, we feel pressure, but it helps us refocus on God. Anything on that one? Yeah. And I help you lay down your own will Mm -hmm. and find God's. Number four, the fourth benefit of fasting and praying is that it provides clarity for the season ahead. Mm -hmm. Many times there's a decision that needs to be made or maybe there's an investment that you're trying to make and you need clarity. Mm -hmm. Anything on that one, it provides clarity for the season. I feel like you do that really well. I'm kind of like an in the moment kind of girl, like just, it's okay. Like when it, I like my, I always say this, well, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Not that I don't plan and prepare, but I kind of like in the moment you, (laughs) you, you're, I feel like, you know, you're giving me some vibes right now. (laughs) Giving you the vibes that thank God you're married to me is what I'm It is. It's true. Uh Okay. Cause you are definitely strong in that area. Um, but I think you do that well. What do you have to say about that? Um, n- nothing. But yeah. you, so like <laughs> when we were like in anything, like uh-huh. you know what we will be as far as the church goes mm-hmm. and as far as our family goes, you know what's, you yeah, have I'm next year planned. Yeah, That's because like, I have to be as a visionary, mm-hmm. as a visionary, and I, I would really encourage husbands to be this, 
is that I need to have goals and I need to see where God wants to take our family. Mm -hmm. So I want to have a plan for 20 years away and 15 years away and five years away. And I've give God the ability to change my plans with mm -hmm. his. But I need to be able to, as a leader, say this is the way we should right. go. So 2024 for our church is the year of multiplication. And I already know what 2025 will be. Right. And so because I'm so far ahead, I'm able to now come back and strategize the things that are necessary to, to go right. that direction. But talk about how do you get there? How do you get to the vision? So you do something that we call for years a plan and pray. How often do you do that? What do you do in your plan and pray? Uh, maybe that's a podcast for another day, uh -huh. but um, two times a year I will go away and I will spend three days just with me and Jesus, mm -hmm. a notepad and a Bible. And I will just connect with him, number one, but number two, just allow him to download to me, specifically the next six months, because mm -hmm. I do this every two years. And in things that are one year, three year, five years away, I just say, Holy Spirit, what's on your heart? What do I need to adjust that's in my life? How can I better lead my church? How can I better lead my family? How can I better lead my heart towards you? And every single time I come out with 10 to 15 pages of direction and clarity mm -hmm. and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage any um, leader to, you got to have some time where you can kind of yeah. um, focus on the future. But I always fast and pray when I do that. Yeah. I, I think that's your point. Yes. I forgot that. So I'll go away for three days mm -hmm. and I typically will start every day, even if it's just breakfast. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll eat at 12. I'll get up at 6 a.m. I'll, I'll, I'll walk the beach and kind of just hear from God. Then I'll get out my Bible, study for a couple of hours. And the first from 6 to 12 will just be God time. Then mm -hmm. I'll have lunch. Then I'll go into the um, practical stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and it just brings refreshing. Amen. But for the sake of time, I'll give you one more and we'll be done. Number five is that it helps us live a more healthy life. Mm -hmm. And this one's huge because people don't know that fasting has natural health benefits. Oh, yeah. They say that it reduces your blood sugar. It reduces your cholesterol. It um, creates uh, it reduces the stress. Uh, I don't know if it's stress hormones in your life. Um, there's tons of things. It gives your organs the ability to rest. Mm -hmm. It gives your cells the ability to rejuvenate and recalculate. Can you just talk to me about the health benefits of fasting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's um, even there's more and more research being done on fasting and the health health benefits. So I know that the longer you go into a fast, the more um, healing properties are released in your body. And so I don't know what the exact, um, you know, uh, how it works exactly, but I'll give you an example. So like after you fast for 12 hours, it's like turning on a light switch, switch, boom. Now, um, maybe your liver is being cleansed. And then after 13 hours, you know, your lungs are being cleansed. And after 14 hours, like it starts bit by bit working on all of the organs in your body. Yeah. And at 72 hours, if you only drink water for 72 hours, scientists and research says that it, you will reset your entire immune system. And so that's why another reason why one of my favorite is the three days. And I used to fast during chemotherapy and things like that. And of course, I'm not saying that everybody should do this, but mm -hmm. I just felt like that's what I should do. Um, I used to fast mm -hmm. um, because I needed to, for my body, my immune system to reset, mm -hmm. to get out all of the junk. It mm -hmm. starts working away on, you know, all of the toxins and things like that are in, that are in your body and exposing of those. Mm -hmm. And so I just find it so amazing and mm -hmm. just like God yeah. to tell us the fast mm -hmm. to set within the <laughs> bodies that he's created yeah. that when yeah. we obey him yeah. on this spiritual matter but uh -huh. that even in our natural bodies yeah. that our natural bodies will be healed mm -hmm. um, you know will be rejuvenated mm -hmm. uh, renewed like the eagles yeah. all of those things yeah. there's tremendous health benefits you can google benefits of fasting mm -hmm. and you will see people who do not even believe in God Article after article yes. after article on the benefits yes. of fasting. How much more for the born again child of God most high that doesn't just fast, but we also Amen. pray. Get ready for natural and spiritual breakthroughs as we fast and pray. We would encourage you guys to join in with us, man. If you've never fasted before, um, you can just follow us. Jump on social media with us. Jump over to our website. There should be some information in the show notes as well. We want to help you get started. And so we love you guys. We're out of time for today. We hope you enjoyed the podcast today, man. We are pumped for a whole nother season. Mm. If you enjoy our content, you got to let us know. Would you email us? If you just want to share your testimony or story, one of the best ways to do so is just to leave a review. Leave a review. Let us know if this is 
blessing you. Let us know if God is using this to restore you, to help you. I'm telling you now, those those reviews that are positive, they encourage us. They let us know that we're reaching the right people. And of course, if this is your first time tuning in to Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha, if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button right now. We want you to be the first to get the content as it is released Um, We'll make sure that you, you you know, we drop a new content every Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we got something coming up that I'm so excited about. We actually have a webinar, y'all. It's coming up on January the 25th. That is Thursday. Write this in your calendar. January 25th, Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are going to do a live question and answer, a live Ask Ken and Tabitha, and we're going to be fielding all of your marriage questions, sex questions, intimacy questions, financial questions, whatever you need to make sure that you have the relationship that God wants you to have. Would you, from around the world, join us live on January the 25th for our first Ask Ken and Tabitha webinar? We hope to see you there, okay? Hey, just know that you're not alone. You're cherished and you're loved. Hey, we got some good things coming out. We actually have the Better Barrage Boot Camp. We're going to tell you more about that coming real soon. We love you guys, and we'll see you real soon. Peace. Peace.